Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my full review of this, the Hamilton Khaki King. Now, this is a watch that has been on my horological radar for years. So I'm delighted to finally get my hands on one, get one in for the channel and give it the full review. Now, this is one of the watches that I bought a few months ago from Joma Shop. You can consider this, therefore, semi-sponsored content. I still paid money for these watches, but Joma Shop did me a deal. In return, they would like me to direct you to their website if you are interested in this Hamilton or pretty much anything else. Now, the RRP on the Hamilton Khaki King, if you walk to your local shopping mall and picked one up there, would be 595 US dollars. That compares rather unfavorably to the Joma Shop price of 375 US dollars. In addition, you'll find a 20 dollar discount code in the description of the video getting you 20 bucks back off this or anything else in joma shop for more than 250 us dollars how can they do it so cheaply well joma shop are not an official ad they're a gray market retailer the box is the same the packaging the same the watch is the same the only thing that's different is the warranty you're not covered by hamilton's two-year warranty you're covered by Joma Shop's two-year warranty instead. So if something does go wrong with the watch during the warranty period, you can't just take it back into your local shop, you've got to send it to Joma Shop. Now, that is a bit of a gamble, I appreciate, but I think, given the disparity in price, it's a gamble well worth taking. All right, enough waffle, Jody. Let's get on with the Hamilton. Over the last couple of weeks or so, I have been wearing this one out and about, and I have been very, very impressed with it. It really is a bit of a value king, especially at that $355 price. It's not perfect, there will be moans, there will be niggles, but overall, this is a great watch for not an awful lot of cash. Let's flip the camera and have a good look at it. So Hamilton is a brand that I'm sure needs little introduction, especially if you hail from the USA. One of the few companies that can trace their lineage back into the 19th century. They've been in business in some guise or other since the late 1800s. Now, used to be American, now owned by the Swatch Group, which is no bad thing these days, frankly. It gives them the access to some fantastic movements from ETA, which we'll talk about later on, and the economies of scale that allow them to put this much watch on your wrist for 355 US dollars. So this is the first one that I've had in this new cardboard veneer box. Maybe that's new for 2019. I've had a couple of Hamiltons in the past. Now, technically, this is a Hamilton Khaki Field King Automatic. So we call it a Khaki King, the Khaki Field being a different watch, but they call it the Khaki Field King, if you see what I mean. It gets very confusing. I used to have a Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer Automatic, quite a gobful, perhaps one of the reasons that I, I sold the watch fairly swiftly. There is, of course, a fairly large instruction manual, which I intend to ignore entirely. American Spirit, Swiss Precision. That's how they get around their mixed heritage. So let's get into the box. And here we have a true modern classic, I think. A field watch design that looks fresh, but can trace its lineage all the way back to the 1940s. So I'm gonna start with dimensions and specifications. Then we'll get some high and low wrist shots. I'll pop this handsome little devil on the time grapher and there will be the usual loom video. So 40 mil, just under 40 mil, I measure about 39.6 mil in diameter. 11 and a half mil thick, so nice and slim on wrist. 49 mil lug tip to lug tip though. So it does wear relatively large for a 40. I mean, you can see how long those lugs are. 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp, and sized up for my seven inch wrist, this one weighs in at 120 grams. So certainly about 20 grams lighter than that sports watch, dive watch, stainless steel sweet spot of around 150 grams. But then again, this one is a field watch, not a sports watch necessarily. 316L stainless steel case, three piece case, we've got a smooth bezel, 316L stainless crown, display case back, I'll show you that one and the movement later on. And we've got obviously a stainless steel bracelet. Now the bracelet is all right. Three piece oyster, nice finishing on it, solid end links, push pins and a reasonable clasp. Nothing particularly flash though. It is all a bit rudimentary, but at least it is a decent scissor clasp. None of this cheap corner cutting that Tiso do at this price. 
The finishing on the case is solid and smooth, if unspectacular. All brush finished on the case itself, and it's a quite a fine brush. But no chamfered edge, nothing fancy today, and quite well guarded crown. High polished crown, high polished bezel, but everything else is brushed. Slightly unusual choice though, I have to say, making the bezel uh, the most scratchable part of the whole watch, just about high polished, everything else is brushed. Personally, I would rather it was all brushed, but I guess that's something you can do yourself or your watchmaker can do if the bezel does become a bit of a problem. You can see I've got a couple of scratches on mine already. Now that is a proper piece of double dome sapphire crystal covering the dial, but no AR coating. Hello, that's me and my camera reflected back there. Again, slightly unusual choice for a field watch not putting some AR coating on there. It loses a little bit of legibility in natural light as well, as you'll see later on. But look at that dial. It is beautiful. Now, don't get me wrong, there's an awful lot going on in this dial, but I think the Hamilton just about pulls it all together. Now, it's a field watch, so legibility is all important. We've got those big Arabics running all the way around from 1 to 11. No 12 today, and the 1 and 11 are both clipped due to that day-date complication, quite unusually located at the top of the dial. I will talk about that. It's a bit of a polarizer. I'll talk about that in a second. Additionally, there is an inner circle featuring 13 to 24 hour markers. Though again, the 24 itself has been very accommodating, heading south a little bit to, to cope with the date functionality. Hamilton printed above the pinion, khaki automatic below it. Then there's a minute track all the way around the outside with five minute markers in Arabics. There are also fifth of a minute markers and little loom dots and Swiss made squeezed down there beneath the six o'clock. So an awful lot going on. But like I say, I think this watch just about pulls it all together. The hands, very nicely proportioned, sword hands, but with syringe tips. And that second hand pushing out all the way to the edge of the minute track there, just perfectly in proportion. I think that second hand really sets the whole dial off beautifully. Now, that day date complication, not to everyone's liking. A lot of people really don't like the fact that the Arabics have been clipped. I've moaned about date complications clipping Arabics before, but I'm prepared to forgive the Hamilton due to the sheer practicality of that day-date complication. I'm one of these idiots that barely knows what day of the week it is, so a watch with a day-date complication is always a bit of a boon for me. So let's pop a link and have a look at the movement. Now these used to come supplied with an ETA 2824, they still do in a manner of speaking, but not quite. This is what they call a Hamilton H40. You'll find it elsewhere in the Swatch Group as the Powermatic 80. Certainly that's what they call it in Tissot's and Certina's. It is in essence an ETA 2824, but they slow it down. They slow it down from four hertz to three hertz. So rather than 28,800 vibrations per hour, this one takes 21,600 times per hour. Now with another couple of internal tweaks, they've managed to boost the power reserve from 38 hours of the standard 2824 to 80 hours, hence the name Powermatic 80. Now that is fantastic. Really, you're looking at Tudors and Omegas, some top end Rolexes, Brightlings, and you're still not getting an 80 hour power reserve in it. And this is a relatively budget watch after all, $355 as mentioned. You don't get that smooth high beat sweep of the second hand, but for that power reserve, I'm prepared to trade it, and I'm sure many of you would be as well. Now, perhaps you already noticed, Swiss made, the model number there, water resistant five bar, 72.5 PSI. Do you think they put 72.5 on there because it's a better number than 50 meters? Perhaps, that'll be in the Moan and Niggle section coming up shortly. Can't really complain about the performance of the H40 in this one either. Plus three seconds a day, Beat error is slightly large, uh, that's at 52 degree lift angle, which is standard for the ETA 2824 upon which this one is based. I will say though that my previous model, the Aviation, was a little bit all over the place. It would bounce around, positive, negative, but somehow it always ended up pretty much bang on. So fingers crossed for the same result from this one. And in operation, it's all pretty much as you'd expect. No screw down crown, so you just wind it forward. One pop will adjust the day and date. There we are, that's the date. And the day, if I roll it backwards, goes in kind of two halves. So Wednesday, Thursday, but it works. And then a further pull will hack the movement and allow you to adjust the time. 
The Loom is okay. Uh, this one made a cameo in Loom Wars episode 2 a couple of weeks ago, you may remember. It got knocked out in the first round. It was up against a bunch of divers and much more expensive watches, so that was no surprise. For a field watch though, it does okay for itself. The hands hang on in long after those Arabics and the little Loom pips around the hour markers have faded. Okay if unspectacular Loom but it does wear really rather well. That's it sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. Wears quite large for a 40 as discussed, those relatively long lug tip to lug tip of 49 mil, but it carries itself well. Now the size, that's gonna be a kind of pro for some and a con for others. My seven inch wrist, kind of Joe average size, I think it does okay for itself. And that is the overhead shot there. Just as well, the white hands, white Arabics on the black dial mean this one is quite legible because that lack of AR coating isn't doing it any favours under my studio lights, is it? And that continues when you take this watch outside into some natural light as well. It is a nice piece of dome sapphire. You do get some nice reflections on it. You can see the palm trees there. So what have we seen today? We've seen me making the video and we've seen the palm trees in my front garden. What we haven't seen is as much of the dial behind them as perhaps we would like to see. So the lack of AR coating is also gonna be on the moans and niggles list today. You can pretty much write this one, can't you? As I said though, nice curvature of those lugs, it does sit quite well in spite of the relatively long lug to lug dimension. Moans and niggles then, yes, well, I'm sure you've been compiling the list as I have been relaying them to you. Only 50 meters of water resistance, no screw down crown, not quite sure why they didn't make it 100. The little brother, the field, the 38 mil date version, it's 100 meters, why didn't they do the same with a khaki king? I'm not sure. High polished bezel when the bezel is probably the last thing you want to be polished, again, a rather unusual choice. And no AR coating couple of layers would not have hurt you, would it Hamilton? Perhaps if they do an upgraded version of this, they will address a few of these minor inconveniences. Perhaps they'll also drill an extra hole or two in that bracelet. One level of micro adjust and they're fairly sizable links as well. Again, seems like a bit of a miss there. But given the strength of the brand, given the looks on that dial, and given that fantastic movement, 80 hour power reserve, day date complication, and pretty accurate to boot, I can forgive this one. $355 for an all stainless steel watch that's slim enough to wear under a suit Monday to Friday. This is a viable alternative to a diver or a dress watch, something a bit different on your wrist with bags of character, bags of history and heritage behind it. So there you have it, the Hamilton Khaki King, a watch that I can now happily tick off my review list and one that did not disappoint. A few moans, a few niggles, no AR coating on the crystal, it's not too bad in practice. Only 50 meters of water resistance, a bit disappointing any stainless steel watch that doesn't have 100 meters of water resistance. It means it's not as much of an all-rounder as it could be. But 355 US dollars is a great price for a Hamilton, you know, what a brand to have on your wrist for that money. Swiss made and a fantastic movement, 80 hour power reserve movement for less than 400 US dollars. You can't go too far wrong with that. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next one.